Um, I thank you to come and join us, and uh, let's just get into it. Um, don't hesitate to like jump into it if you have any questions, so that we can keep it as um, vivid as possible. So, um, welcome. So, let's just get right into it. And uh, both of you have um, have experiences of working and filming abroad, and maybe the um, nice way to step into this panel is by. Um, letting people know how you got into this um, working abroad. Maybe Jan can mm -hmm. just start off because you uh, started with a lot of uh, Flemish TV series and how did you actually went into working with, for the BBC? And yeah, thank you. Yeah, then suddenly after yeah, two years ago, um, I won a prize in, um, in Biarritz at the FIPA, FIPA festival. And the strange thing about that prize was it was called like um, the prize for my complete oeuvre. So it felt a bit like a, a lifetime achievement. And I was only 45. So <laughs> it felt a bit weird. And then I thought, okay, <laughs> we'll see what happens now. And then after one week, um, I was contacted by a, a London agency, Casarotto. In fact, a few agency after a while, and then I, uh, I went to London to visit them. And uh, apparently, that's how they work. And that's one of the ways they work. They they look at festivals and they consider festivals as the ideal uh, breeding ground for, um, to pick big talent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I visited the three agencies, and there was one very small agency, a very boutique agency. Casaloto, where I found, I think, the ideal agent uh, for me. And it's not her uh, concern to find a, a lot of, of, of work for me, so it's not about the, the quantity. She, we discussed a lot about what kind of career do you dream, what kind of uh, jobs and genres do you like. And so then she started looking uh, work and then we started off with, with um, mm -hmm. uh, two episodes of um, a, a crime series and uh, that all went well and then I was uh, they asked me for uh, another BBC One show which is called uh, Our Girl it was shot this year in South Africa so that's my latest experience. Were you offered um several options and then you picked the ones yes. you um, were interested in most or how did that yes. when well, they, they they often send you an email like you were checked on and then you were checked on and then the show and um, and then she even even when she knows that I'm not available she just emails you like you, you were checked on is that something uh, yeah, you would like to, to mm -hmm. consider and if the answer is yes, then they arrange like a meeting with the producer or with the with the, with the writer. So and then you can start the whole mm. process. So. And could you maybe specify? I don't know. If maybe you know that mm. in detail. Why they chose you particularly? Would you Would you know why? For our girl. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. But I, I think. Um, Especially BBC One, which is a, a very broad um, uh, broadcaster. Um, I think they were looking for both, uh, yeah, a, a experience. I think uh, they saw my show, really, they saw also in Flanders Fields and Smack on the Cash. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then what I also think that for for, uh, for the British uh, producers and. Uh, I mean, call it the, the people who decide who buy uh, on the level of broadcasts. Um, I forgot the name. So people who are commissioners, in commissioners yes. exactly. So um, they, I think they also consider after Denmark, Flanders as a, a kind of exotic, interesting breeding ground. So mm -hmm. they, I don't know why, but they just skipped the Netherlands. <laughs> and they <laughs> immediately jumped to, to Flanders. And um, an, another reason why they, they were looking for, for Flemish uh, directors is that there is a, sh a shortage 
especially in uh, London, experienced um, drama directors often move to America, to LA, because mm. there's such a, a need for, for all the Netflix and, and, and the cable shows. So that's, I consider myself also lucky that there was a, a bit of room left. Mm. Vanya, your experience is a bit different as um, the idea of working abroad for you comes from the story that you um, write and, and direct. Um, could you maybe also go into in a bit more detail how you de how you decided to then work with countries as Japan and uh, a bit beyond the steps of the whole range of countries there? Um, yeah, actually, it's really it's it's interesting because you just said oh because you both have the experience also of working in Flanders and if I think about it, I think of all the films I made since I left school, which mm -hmm. was in in, in Flanders. I just had one shooting day <laughs> in Flanders <laughs> um, because it's every time, I mean, I think I always, that's probably part of my themes is that I'm, I like, I consider myself really like a world citizen, I like to travel and so the stories that I come up with are always far away. <laughs> for some reason. Mm -hmm. So I, I shot in Spain, I shot in Russia, I shot in Kazakhstan, Poland, Japan, France, mm -hmm. but just one day, I had one shooting day on, on Beyond the Steps in, in Flanders. Um, and it's, it's probably just because that's where my, my heart leads me. And, um, and so it's interesting that we have these different experiences mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's true that I've never done like TV. I would, I would love to for someone, you know, to tell me, oh, there's this project. Why don't you, don't you want to direct it? Mm -hmm. But it just doesn't happen like that. I'm always the one initiating. Yeah. So there's always something, a spark, uh, that makes me fall in love with the story, and that makes me want to put three years of my life into it. Mm -hmm. And and that's how co-productions mm -hmm. actually yeah. build around what's yeah. needed for that project. That every mm -hmm. single project has been a different story. Um, so we, we really, and that's where you start talking with, you know, the producers mm -hmm. that are really, of course, important because yeah. they're, it's really finding the balance between what's right for the story mm -hmm. and what story mm -hmm. I want to tell uh, and remain very uh, authentic and true mm -hmm. to what I need, to the story I need to tell and how we are going to be able to get it made. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, we can't make a feature film with just Belgium. Mm -hmm. Uh, we need to go abroad, and that's where you have to start thinking, okay, so how, what balance are we going to find between where we shoot, where we do the post-production, which actors we use, which crew, and that's the whole build-up. Um, so yeah, so the, the film, the, my just last film that was shot in Japan and France, but it was a co-production co between Belgium, France and Canada. Mm -hmm. The previous film was shot in Poland and Kazakhstan and was a co-production between Belgium and Poland. The one before was shot in Russia, there was a short, and then a documentary in, in Spain. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And how do you make these first contacts? Because you have a, a story in your mind that you want to tell and then you're going to those countries. How, how maybe, you go about the whole Japan story? Well, for the Japan story, I think there's every project really has a natural logic. Mm -hmm. And you have to try to follow that natural logic as much as you can, by at also by looking a bit wider on what is the best way to get the film made. So in the case mm -hmm. of, the, of uh, Le Coeur Régulier, that's the film that was shot in Japan, Kokoro is actually the mm -hmm. Japanese uh, mm -hmm. um, title of the film. Um, it was actually based on a French novel, which takes place in Japan, and so and it had to be Japan. It's a very Japanese story. It's about this Japanese man mm -hmm. who saves suicide candidates from a cliff, like it's a cliff in Japan where a lot of pe Japanese people commit suicide. And this old Japanese man, he's an ex-cop, and he, um, since he's, he's he was retired, he actually mm -hmm. spends his days watching the cliffs. And when he sees someone who's going to jump, he brings him home. So that's, th that he's, I mean, in the film, he's a secondary character, but he's like, that's what the film is about. So it had to be Japan. It couldn't be Vietnam or Korea, you know, yeah. it had to be Japan. And, but it's a French novel. So, and it's quite a famous author in France. And so logically, 
with my Belgian producer, we went to a French producer who already knew that author, mm -hmm. and so he actually was interested to become a, more than a co-producer because the film is really a 50-50 Belgian France mm -hmm. production. And with he owned rights. Mm -hmm. He owed the rights. He had the rights already. The producer. No, he yeah. didn't have the rights. Ah. So we went to see him when we had nothing really. Right. Yeah. And where the thing is that my Belgian producer didn't have an as good idea of the market as the French producer yeah. did. The French producer instantly knew, okay, that author is worth so much, yeah. so because it's going to be a small production, we're going to have to negotiate mm -hmm. much less. Mm -hmm. So the producer actually made the first step to the writer's agent, and he negotiated the rights, and he got the rights. So that's how we actually started, how it became logically and naturally from the first step of co-production with France. Yeah. And so Japan was obviously the, I mean, um, the obvious country to work with, but it wasn't possible to do a co-production because they don't have film commissions. It's like a very, it, it works more like the States. You can't really co-produce mm -hmm. with, with, a, with a country like the States or with Japan. So we knew we, we would need a third country, um, which couldn't be Japan. So we mm -hmm. went to Canada, <laughs> which wasn't very logic, but... Um, that happened because during the development, we got uh, like this sort of francophone federation uh, support for the development during the writing of the film, and that's where we met our Can Canadian co-producer, and and he really liked the project, and he also in in French-speaking Canada, the the, the novel, um, I mean the the author was quite oh, famous yeah. too. The actress we chose is a famous actress in France and also in Quebec, so it kind of made sense to mm. do it this way. And at the end of the day, it's been a really great adventure to work with Canada, to have like this this funny mix of countries and shooting in yeah. Japan. Um, so it, it it's it, and it's the kind of thing that either everything goes really well, or it all falls mm. apart. Like there's no in between, you know. Mm -hmm. Either it all goes like shooting in Japan with not much money, with this kind of co-production where you just get just the money you need, but really not one, every, every single euro is, is put in the film. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's risky. So either it goes great or it goes fatal. And we were lucky. <laughs> do you always work with um, crew that is local or do you take some Flemish yeah. or well, I do have my people, so yeah. I always work with Ruben Impens as a DOP. Mm -hmm. I always work with the same makeup artist because I think that's a super important person. I always work with the same production manager, mm -hmm. but the rest you have to deal with the co-production, and that's different for every mm -hmm. film. And in the countries where I go, like for this one, Japan, for the previous one in Kazakhstan, mm -hmm. I also really think, as an as an author mm -hmm. film, that you have to respect the country you go. Mm -hmm. So you can't just be like an American production who just goes and colonizes yeah. and does things their way. I think it's really important to find the right balance between, okay, we're coming with our money to make a film, but we really want to integrate the local people. Mm -hmm. And in both cases, it's been a, a very interesting adventure because we had to adapt. They had to adapt to our way on the set, mm -hmm. but they, we had to adapt to their way on the like more logistical part. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important also because I think it makes a better film. Mm -hmm. I think by really getting into the culture and, and having the people, the local people's input, I think the film gets better. Obviously, I'm not mm -hmm. Japanese. There's a lot of things I don't know. I mean, I've been there many times and I'm very fascinated mm -hmm. by the culture, but there's lots of things that Japanese people know much more than I do. Mm -hmm. And so the details and the way to just even during the whole casting process and location hunting, the way you behave, I think it's really important to be open-minded to where you go. I mean, that's my way of doing mm -hmm. And, um, and I hear lots of stories of, of big American productions who go to Tokyo and they just put in the money and they, have, they, they don't really have much respect for the locals because they need to do their thing with their money. But then when you don't have money, that's the good thing, is that you need the people. And so that makes more probably interesting human adventures. 
do you have that same experience where you, with the series that you did, you can make your own crew, or were you mm. provided with one? Uh, did you have? Yeah, that was in interesting for me. Mm. Even my first project, mm. uh, Shetland, which was already series three, and where I was asked to do episode uh, four, five, and six. Mm -hmm. Uh, out of six, so the last three episodes mm -hmm. of that series, uh, I, I was. They just asked um, me, "What uh, what DOP do you want? Mm -hmm. Do you want to bring your own DOP?" And also, uh, I was able to bring my editor. Mm -hmm. So they are very, yeah, very open. I think for um, towards directors to to create the most ideal circumstances. That was new for me, and, and um, was for for me that was an important one. Mm -hmm. So they, they don't consider, uh, in that case, in, in, in Shetland, they, they think that like the actors and the atmosphere and the island itself generates enough continuity and they, they like the uh, identity of, of each director with his or her crew. So and that was for me an, an, an eye-opener, a very interesting thing. And then another thing you say, which is I think also very um, recognizable, if, if you're talking about working with, with the people, and the last project, Our Girl, I shot in, um, in South Africa, so for three months and, and a week I shot in South Africa, and there you have like the, in Cape Town, the, uh, what they call the servicing industry, so they are very well equipped and very, very, very uh, experienced, because uh, a lot of American crews shoot over there, and, and also because of the the currency, the the, the rent, mm -hmm. which is very low, makes it very very interesting for international productions to go to shoot over there to generate uh, a lo lot of uh, production value. But for me, um, there was a big crew, like mm -hmm. 220 people, and a lot of action. And for me, the hardest part was like in the first week that everybody was like, uh, almost every department was like, uh, happy when you're happy, sir. So that was their attitude. Happy when you're happy, sir. So very, um, yeah, surfacing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, I had to, to make myself clear after a few days that for me, it's, it's much more important that they are happy as well as an, as an individual, as a, as a creative person. So it took a few days after after one week, they were really able to to, to put also their uh, creative energy in it, and then it became like also all the Africans like every morning they they while well, they were putting the the, the stands they, they they began to sing and they began to, uh, to to act like they normally should do <laughs> if they if they should locally. So. Um, for me, it was nice to see, even when you shoot abroad and when you shoot an, an international project, I agree. The more you can embed it in, in the local culture, the better, I think. Mm -hmm. and would you, how would you compare that with the Flemish experience that you had? In, in general, you mean? Or? Yes. Um, I, I really mm -hmm. like, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad uh, that I made my, my start here in, in, in Flanders because we are, I think, uh, very, very challenged because of the low budgets and low shooting schedules. Challenged to be creative and to, to find a way to, to enhance the uh, production value. And like an example, um, uh, in, in Smart from the Cares, uh, Emperor of Taste, I shot, it, it's situated in the Second World War, and I, I had like uh, 12 military tents to create a whole military camp. So it was important to, to put all the tents in the right, uh, the right spot, and it was also important to have some of the tents like mobile, so that we could, we could, sorry, we could uh, replace them in, in function of the, of the shot. And here, in the last series, I, um, during uh, production meetings with, with the art director, the production designer, um, because this story, um, 
that there's, there's a huge uh, refugee camp situated on the um, Somalian border in Kenya, and they just started the, uh, the the meeting by saying 350 tents. Will that suit you, sir? Will that do? And, and during my my preparation, I counted like maybe 40, 50 tents, and then I do my trick again, and it uh, will be okay. So that was a, a fantastic um, experience. Not for me, not immediately because of that scale, but it, it provided uh, labor for the local people because they, they flew or they shipped over one tent from the UK and then lots of sewers had to, had to make and they were well paid, I asked it. They were like smiling all day. <laughs> uh, so that was an advantage. But the other advantage and that was for me most um, the important thing to realize is that um, a crew of a local crew of like 20 people in that art department worked like one month to, to put uh, that refugee camp on a hill, a hillside, and because it took one month, all the the, the foot parts and all those connecting parts became real. And, and, and part of the crew even slept overnight in the tent, so they, they, they were used. And during that month, we also witnessed a storm, a big uh, storm. So the tents were also partly damaged. And, and so we kept it like, like that after a month. And then for actors, most of the actors just told me this, this is so interesting for us, so for, for our characters, because it becomes real. And in comparison to Flanders, I, I always had to count on their imagination. So imagine 100 tents. And <laughs> so they had to do more, um, more work. So, um, so I, I, I don't feel spoiled because I had that <laughs> amount of, of um, that kind of possibilities. And, but on the other hand, I, I think when I, when I do more local jobs again, because I would like to, to continue to, to do both. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will be disappointed, because it's, it's, it's another challenge. Mm -hmm. It's another way of, um, of using your creativity. You think you will have a, a different view because you had that experience? And maybe also extending to you, um, because of the crews you worked with, what do you take with you that is maybe different than it would be here? Um. A lot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, no, it's really... That's what I love about going to work and shoot and in, in such faraway countries, is that I, I really think it's a privilege that I had to make a mm -hmm. film in Japan and in Kazakhstan and in other countries because it's... How can I say? Every time you just, the wonderful thing is to be able to, with such culturally different people, make one film and that it works, that it's somehow we do find a balance and we do find a harmony to create something together. When in the beginning it's just like, you know, culturally very, very different ways of doing things. And um, I think it all, like for the whole Western crew in Japan and also in Kazakhstan in different ways, but we all learned a lot on how they work, on, and I think they learned a lot too, because, for example, what they would say about our set in, in Japan, the Japanese crew and cast, because there was quite an important cast too, they said, wow, it's so quiet and so concentrated and people laugh and there's humor and it's not as, like, because of course Japan is very hierarchical and um, and, and very authoritarian, and it's mostly, you know, like you wouldn't, uh, for example, you can, in Japan, like because it's this very important hierarchy, you can only laugh, of, like, like it's only the more important person who can make a joke, and you can only laugh from the lower person's <laughs> joke. You can't, you know, when in this case, it was, you know, sometimes the assistant, um, <laughs> Whatever, yeah, yeah. like assistant camera, would, he was actually the funniest guy on the set and he would make jokes and everybody would laugh. He was the Canadian guy, of course. And, um, and so for the Japanese people, they really felt 
happy on our set, mm. and that really yeah, makes me happy. Important. That's what you were saying mm. also about having other people be happy where they are, so that they, their creative input is better too. And so they were like, wow, it's concentrated, and, and, it's, a, and it's a happy, joyful set, but still we're doing good work. And for us, I mean, to see their, their, their competence and their way of working, their rigor, and, and, and that was also a great lesson for us. And even for, for our actress, Isabelle Garry, who's quite one of the I mean, top ten actresses in France, she has worked with all the best actors in France, but there she was with a Japanese cast, and she was just so impressed with their commitment, with the way they were always ready, with the way they had all prepared their role. They had like some people, like one of the women, she was playing one of the saved persons from the cliff, and who was like it at this old man's home. And she, the actress, had actually spent one week at the real guy's place. In, on the cliffs there, mm -hmm. by the sea, to be isolated, to feel how it goes. And so Isabelle Carré was like really impressed. And she says, in France, there's this thing where actors, they have to do, do it like as if it was like improvised, you know? They can't even have read a book about the subject because it's nerdy, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. she says, it's like, she always feels, because she's not like that, she's more like a very engaged actress, and she always feels like, it feels like she's the good student, mm. and that it's, it's in France, there's a bit this snobbish, sometimes, attitude to, between mm. actors, and she said it was so great to be working with actors who she really learned from a lot. So, um, then that's Japan. Kazakhstan is a different story. Yeah. <laughs> But again, there people are more like, it's all much slower, it's not as organized, and you have to deal with that chaos too. I think you can't, and that's why also I always work with the same production manager, because he really yeah. also has that mentality of saying, we are going to other people's places, we are shooting in another country, so even if it's not going the way in our rules, we still have to do deal with it. So in Kazakhstan, that was a big lesson too, because sometimes it was just a bit nuts. But it's like, okay, we're in Kazakhstan. We wanted to shoot this film here because it's beautiful landscapes yeah. and because that's what the story needs. So now we have to be respectful of, of how they are. And, and um, yeah. Can I ask, how do you cope with the language? Production-wise, but towards actors? Yeah. In general, well, I, it was, yeah, in fact, that was my initial vulnerability. Um, and it became clear already in, in rehearsals and uh, during meetings that um, because I'm not a native English speaking person, no, <laughs> um, that uh, um, they are in, um, at the BBC, but I think in, in, in the UK in general, so used to work with, with uh, foreign directors and with foreign crews and they are, I think they are used to all kinds of English, Euro English or especially the German English, which is very <laughs> specific. <laughs> so I think they, yeah, they, they, they didn't make it difficult for me. And then on the level of directing, I'm, I'm also struggling in, in Flemish. And I've tried to, <laughs> to find new uh, words or ways to express myself. So after a while, I, I realized that directing is, is, is also beyond language. As you know, it's, it's, it's yeah. about connecting. And okay, but in, in English, I can understand, uh, yeah. more or less understand what they're saying. I bet the effort, oh yeah. Because I've done more in, in, uh, yeah. in Japan. Well, or do you speak? Well, I, actually, I always try to learn the language where I, where I shoot a film. It's always an opportunity to learn a new language. So I always have like a few language skills. Not, I don't speak Japanese, but I can at least, you know, at some point use some words that I know that it's going to make them, you know, feel at ease, at least, that I'm, you know, making the effort. Um, same in Kazakhstan, I did learn some Russian and Polish, you know, I always try to have a little bit. I think it's important, even just the basics, but just to show that you, you have this intention. And then when you need to have like proper conversations, either you use the little English they know, which in Japan is not much, 
um, or in extreme circumstances you have to use an interpreter. Um, but in my experience it's never been a problem. Language has never been a problem. Just because, um, as he says, there are things that just go beyond words. Um, and that, but that you need to be very clear on what the project is. I think if everybody knows what film we're making, you don't really need to have big conversations anymore. And that's a good lesson too, that you realize that, for example, well, the, the French, they speak a lot. Mm -hmm. And they need to have like long, like with my French actress, we need, we had long conversations for two years Don't before. Be yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Japanese, it was just clear. Sometimes one word, it's like, okay, okay, okay. Like you start with one word, you want to explain more, it's yeah. like, it's fine, I'm, I'm fine, I just need that word. And I also had with, for example, in Japan, my um, production, production designer, she was like a, a champion. She was the production designer of Lost in Translation and of like, she was really a fantastic person. And she didn't speak a word of English, not a word, not one word. But for some reason, we just understood each other. And we had a really amazing connection, as good as I had with my my French production designer or, or the, the, you know, I, it was really not a problem. And I couldn't tell you why, I couldn't tell you how, but it was just that we were there in, in the places where we had to do our work and we just found our way with, with, you know, looking at images and we just looked at each other and there was something where, and I knew she knew exactly the film we were making. I trusted her completely and she did an amazing work. So it's things sometimes you can't explain. Uh, but it's also because when you really do need to have a con an important conversation, you can always use a bilingual Japanese English speaking person. Um, but um, yeah, and same thing, yeah, also in Kazakhstan, in the, like the whole Russian, the Russian cast, there was something where you, sometimes with just a few words to the actors, it's even easier than to have like big explanations. And so how was that in South Africa? For yeah, you? it was very, very comparable. Um, we had some Somalian actors in the story because the story, the story happens um, at the border, Kenya, Somalia, and um, so they, yeah, Somalian was we weren't able to communicate. It was very very similar. We had also an interpreter on the set, but we didn't need it. And, and also, I think uh, BBC was like a bit uh, aware of, of, maybe a bit afraid of. Uh, we have to check every single uh, take because maybe because it's such a sensitive matter. Uh, it's like a Muslim Christian thing in the in the story. So maybe there is a danger that that the actors change a little bit the dialogues and so. So we it was was a a, a thing of, of, of mutual trust. Yeah. And also, I, 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 I really agree, and even, even as a viewer, I think if you watch uh, a Japanese movie, a Japanese spoken movie, or a Chinese spoken movie, I think as a, as a director, you, if, if, it's, if, it's, um, um, if, if they are honest, and, and the performance is, is honest, you, you, can, you can feel it, you can sense it. And a bad movie with, with bad actors, when it's in a, in a foreign language, you immediately detect it because, so that's, that's why I call it the beyond language. Mm -hmm. And after a while, because we shot like heavy, heavy days in, 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 in very uh, warm weather conditions, and then after a while when you get tired and when the English doesn't come <laughs> good anymore, then the, the, the African crew just 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 say it in Flemish. <laughs> yes, we speak Afrikaans, and so there was always a way of, of finding each other. And how how do you go about scripts? What happens there? Translations or an English version for everyone? Could you elaborate on that? Uh, well, um, in in the case of uh, of uh, Kokoro, we had I wrote the script in. French, I think. Was it French or English? I think I was. I wrote it in French because it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, firstly for the yeah. French market, and then it got translated in English for co-production reasons. You know, when you have to start finding mm -hmm. co-producers, 
And then it got obviously translated to Japan Japanese quite, quite uh, in very early stage of the process. And they actually make, always make like a very beautiful booklet that everybody receives all in Japanese. So there's a beautiful Japanese version of the script and they use it a lot. So yeah, of course you have to, that for that kind of things you need yeah. translators and that's very important because that's it's the only way we can make the same movie, obviously. But then one thing is important too is because co-production sometimes can influence the writing um, where you, and that's something I do like. It's the fact that because it can be seen as a constraint, a creative constraint for a writer, but I think sometimes it's really something you can use. You have to be very clear on, on what you can do and what you can't do, like the concessions you're able to make and the ones you're not able to make, but sometimes it can really nourish a script. Like for example, I did before the Beyond the Steps, I made a short film on the Trans-Siberian train. And um, I remember that first the story just took place on a train and it was a story of two people who don't speak the same language and who meet on a train. And then it was like a production decision to say, okay, let's shoot it on the Trans-Siberian. And once the idea came of shooting it on the Trans-Siberian, I did the journey once from Moscow to Vladivostok, then I went home and rewrote the script. Oh. And it actually became something, it was the same story, but it was all more nourished by the experience yeah. of the Trans-Siberian. And then the second time when we actually went to shoot the film, we were like for seven days on the train with the whole crew, and we had our two actors, and then we casted all the secondary characters on the train and actually really used the place to, to, to nourish the film. And I did that for most of my films, actually, where every time I find the place, I know where it's going to happen, it's going to influence the writing. And sometimes it can happen even with actors because, you know, in this in the case of Kokoro, I had to have like one of the characters because there's a whole part taking place in France had to be Canadian. Yeah. So it was like, okay, Canadian actors. So you start looking, and then there's this first candidate and the other candidate. And actually, I also rewrote some parts of one of the characters because I had to take this Canadian actor. And I think, and it, and I was really, and I think it was a great thing for the yeah. film. So oftentimes, I mean, I think co you have to do co-productions if you want to make features. So you have to integrate what co-productions imposes and make it, you know, <coughs> creative. But it has, I mean, it has to make sense. But it can also, you, it's something that you can use as being something helpful and something that makes the film better. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what your mm -hmm. experience, but... Um, yeah, in my case, it, it wasn't a co-production, mm. so... You know. what, what was your role um, with working on the script? How did you lay a, like yeah. a, an element of yourself in this story? How, yeah. did, how did you go about it? I, um, I, I, I got involved when the script was in, this, in the second draft and shot the fifth or the sixth draft became a shooting script. So I, I had on a, on a regular basis um, script meetings where I could express all my or give all my notes. And, and mm -hmm. So I, I think also it's important for as a as a, as a director um, who is not the author of the script mm -hmm. that you 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 have to you should become author, mm -hmm. and that's so important. And that's how how they want it and how they like it as well. So and then after a while. I, I, if I if I, if I if I hear your stories, I um, I'm a little bit uh, jealous <laughs> to hear the like the freedom, the creative freedom you have um, in in that writing process. You can rewrite always, so that's of course impossible when you work for a, an existing show on the BBC. So uh, the, the the shooting script, uh, it's it's like it has like a watermark on it. You can only open it with a secret code and, and yeah if you if you and it's often the case you just leave it on set or you forget it they can find you so it's oh, you, right. you have to yeah that's that's a bit the other side of the of the story it gets very very uh, formatted and and then controlled mm -hmm. by it's interesting it's, that you talk about creative freedom because it's originally having to rewrite because of a 
yeah. a new well, yeah, productional aspect yeah. can be seen as something constrictive, but uh-huh. actually it's, yeah. it's true, it's freedom. It's, yeah, this, that's it's how true. I would, yeah, yeah. would describe it. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, and then there's like the crew, for example, like you have to, of course, usually in co-productions you can always, like the DOP, it's always something you can mm. have your own. Uh, there's some like key functions that you can really impose and say, I want mine. But then, you know, in this case, it was okay. Part of the crew had to be French, part of the crew had to be Canadian. So it's like, okay, well, let's hope we're lucky and try to find the right people. Um, and you can be lucky, you can have good luck and bad luck. But, uh, and same thing in Japan or in Kazakhstan, the people you're going to work with, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but you still have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. And, um, Did you, for young, that is, did you experience a difference in the role of the director when you are directing? How are you perceived as the director on set? And well, they, they, uh, they really, really res- respect the way you are and they, they, yeah, they take over yeah, your, your attitude and the way you... And, and for me that was... I wasn't used to uh, in, when I should in, in Belgium, I always try to blend in and, and to adapt myself to what the, the often limited possibilities of the, of the production. And in this case, they, they, they really looked at me and, and offered me the, the space and the room. And to, so I, I, yeah, I, I could, um, in an early stage already, I could install like the the ability for everybody to, 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 let's say, to hesitate or just to not know. So a, a, a possible answer during those meetings could be, I'm not sure yet. And I often used, in the first weeks, I'm, yeah, I, I think it might be a good idea, but I'm not sure yet. Mm-hmm. And that's something that was, un- was possible for me. So I always, it's, it's, it's like, I had to, I don't know the proper word in English, but ontluizen. How would it sound in English? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's it's um, it was like I felt really uh, free of, of a lot of uh, inhibitions and, and, and mm-hmm. um, um, but if if you asked like what would you bring back home mm-hmm. and uh, there's. Unfortunately, in the ideal world, I would I would bring a lot of money back home <laughs> to to create um, a little bit is enough, I think. We're, we're almost there. So, but um, I, I think the the, the most important uh, differences I witnessed was the uh, productional level. Um, I, I worked with producers, with executive producers who were not uh, manager types, but often women, women in their late 50s, 60s, mm-hmm. very, very experienced and very hands-on, and, and uh, women who came from the, from the floor. The, the, and so they watched, uh, every day they watched my rushes, so rushes were, were sent to the BBC, and three people watched rushes. And I got notes and comments um, next day, and I, very honestly, I never, never felt like um, like limiting or like like they were like keeping an eye on me. Or <laughs> it really felt very uh, stimulated and uh, stimulating and, and motivating. And, and uh, they often um, after after my first shooting week. They, one of the notes was, why, uh, why don't you shoot? Why, why don't, why, why don't you shoot more? Feel free to shoot more. You just shoot the things you need, and that was just my, 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 my head education and my the way I was used to shoot, like three setups, and it's told. So, and now they, they, they in, re, literally invited me. Just feel free. And, and we'll see in the editing, see in the edit afterwards. So, if I could take yeah. that kind of, of attitude, and it's, it's, it's 
it's more uh, yeah, it's, it's about personal skills, about about capable producers, capable um, and 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 um, for me it was also the first time that a, a, that the producer was not the owner of the production company. So, in a way, he or she had to prove themselves mm -hmm. as well, yeah. also creatively, and so that means that the money often is spent um, on the right, on the right things, and, and you can see uh, the money on the screen. How did you experience your variety of uh, co-producers over the years? Um, well, the thing is, I've always, like, the, the, my base camp was always Belgium. Yeah. And then there was always, like, a, like for the first film, there was mm -hmm. Poland, and the second one there was France, and then Canada. I like the fact, I like to have many producers. Yeah. <laughs> because it's always, it gives a different balance, especially when they're very involved in the project, because uh, a good producer is also creatively involved. And I think it's good not just to have one producer who's creatively involved, because it's just only one angle, one perspective, one point of view. And I think it's very important to have different point of views and to have like not one principal producer who has all the power on that creative input, but to have maybe two or three um, and who sometimes disagree. I think that's a perfect thing, because that allows me also to make my own way and, and not be mm. just in one dialogue mm. with the producer. So I think it's, yeah, it's a very important relationship with the producer and, and it's one of the reasons why I think co-productions can be so helpful creatively for a director. Mm. It's because you have different allies mm. and uh, you need to have different allies. So, well, the thing also is that the, the, the countries where I shot we're not. We're never co-production countries. Mm -hmm. Like you know, Japan wasn't the co-production company. But I would have loved to have like a Japanese producer come into the editing room and, and give his inputs. But you know, that's that's a different story. Um, so, do you see a difference in, for instance, the Canadian or the French or the Polish then? Uh, yes, there's a difference. Um, hmm. Uh, well. The Canadians, um, for example, it was very funny because during the mix, so I did the whole sound post-production in Montreal, and at the end of the mix, the Belgian producers came to see the mix, and you know, and the Canadian producers were there, and so we had this like big meeting after like mix screening, and then the Canadians produ producers started, and they said, like they maybe had like two commentaries, like oh maybe the <laughs> maybe the, the, the car is a bit too loud there, and maybe the crunch of the cucumber is a bit too loud there. And that was it. And then the French producer had like 20 <laughs> pages of notes. <laughs> and so, you know, that's the difference. And, and it's, it's probably not just because they're French yeah. or Canadian, it's also a matter of personality. But um, um, that's, it's, it's a nice thing too. I think it's a Flemish producer would probably have a more, would come and see and have a different view too, more, more, maybe more pragmatic and, and so, yeah. Was it French speaking or English speaking? The film? Canadian. Oh, the Canadians, French speaking. Yes, <laughs> Quebec, Quebecer, yeah. So. But again, the, the whole, also the whole Montreal experience was wonderful too, because there, it, it was great to work with, um, what I really love about the way they work in, in Montreal is that it's, it's North America, so there is some kind of, a, of an American way of dealing with things, but it's still very European mm. culturally. So it's nice because it's a, it's, we work rigorously, it's very pragmatic, but then it's, also, there's, it's a good mix between between the two continents. Like Belgium. Sorry? Like yeah, like Belgium. Belgium, somehow. That's the, that's the advantage of Belgium, I'd say, that you have the Flemish and the French people actually have a little bit of Mediterranean and Anglo Saxon. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Mixed up. It's so true. Um, and and that's. that's Absolutely, and I think that that's what I love about being able to do those mixes. And I, I love to say that 
on, on Beyond the Steps, my previous film, we were on the set and I think we were speaking six languages. Um, with nobody, like there were like biling, like there was English, Russian, Kazakh, Flemish, French, and Polish. And with nobody speaking, I mean, there was not, like, how can I say, there were like bilinguals, yeah, yeah. English, Russian, but there was no, or bilinguals, Polish, English, but nobody speaking the two same languages. So it was like this whole mix of languages, but it worked, we did one film. So, yeah. Uh, when you work in those countries, what do they know about Belgium? <laughs> Uh, well, yeah. go well, ahead. Yeah. Just, just one funny, uh, I, I, I was back in Belgium um, after my first series and one of those British uh, producers called me, um, tomorrow I'm in Berlin, can we have lunch together? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they still see, uh, you have the UK and you have Europe and it's all close to. <laughs> Wow, and that's a UK producer, it's not even like... <laughs> yeah. Um, well, in, in Japan they know, kind of know what Belgium is, but it's, it's, it's not very clear. They, they know France, I mean France is, is very, like they love French culture, so I think the fact that we were also like a Belgian-French production is something that they really liked. But then they got to know us, and I think they liked us. And, um, but yeah, usually to be Belgium is, is more like, you know, not very identified. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would love to open up to more questions, so do please give a shout. Um, you said earlier that you wanted, uh, that the idea of the movie is very clear. But how do you do it if they don't speak uh, language very well, like English or do you do it by pictures or how do you make your own thing? How do I communicate about yeah, the film? About the film, because you, you said you want everybody has to have a clear idea yes. about the film. Mm -hmm. And how do you make it clear if they don't understand it? Or is it always with translators or with pictures? Or well, um, first of all, the script, that's one thing. And then I think the first discussion is always very important. The first discussion you have either with a, a, a cast member, even during casting, when you meet every actor, always very clearly explain, and that's in this case, either they would understand English or I would have a translator. Um, but like the, I think that's a key moment with anyone you're going to work with on a film, is the first meeting, the first way you talk about the film, and to try to keep it very precise and to just bring one idea and to adapt the idea to the person you're talking to like if you're talking to an actor or with a set designer or with you know someone who's going to work on, on even I don't know sound or just to adapt the way you talk about your film towards the, the, the function of the person so for example during auditions I would every time talk about the film a little bit and then try to talk about it from the perspective of the character that the actor is auditioning for. Uh, or to the set designer, I'm going to talk about the film and tell in what way that the, the whole decorum is important and how it's going to feed the film. So to really try to take their perspective and how they, their, what's going to be their input. Um, and I think once that first idea is very clear, they bring things. And then that's where you start needing less words, is that they're going to make proposals. And the first proposals are probably not going to be at all what you wanted. But then you just, you know, try to redirect. And from the new proposals, it's going to be more and more precise. And once you've got it, you just let them do what they can do. If they're good people, then they're going to do it right. Uh, with actors, same thing. Like I had one of my actors uh, in Japan who um, the first day he started doing things where I thought it was not really exactly the same direction. And I honestly, I just needed a few words just to tell him a little bit more in that direction. And it was, he started doing something quite different and that was it. And it was, okay, you got it. And then you don't need much anymore. So, but that's very personal. I think it's really, 
I mean, directing is all about human relations and in, interrelations, really, and finding a different dialogue, I think, with every person you work with and, and try to, to be, yeah, as, as to identify yourself as much as you can to the person who is going to, to you know, give yeah. something to the film. Mm -hmm. So, does that answer your question? Okay. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're never going to mix up the prison and the system. Yes, it's true. So they probably understood each other quite well. Well, in Belgium, we're far more yeah. on the same level. Well, yeah, it's true, but I think they, they like that. I think, well, there would always be the thing, like, for example, the director. It's like, you know, as a director, they don't even call you by your name. It's like Kantoku-san, which means director-san. You know, <laughs> that was how they would talk about me or to me. Kantoku-san. And... I liked that, I thought it was fun, but I was not, I would do things my way, which is to do, I just consider I do my part of the job, which is directing, and everybody does his own part of the job. I don't really see things hierarchically, of course, I make decisions, and, but I don't, it's just a function. It's not, humanly, we're all the same. And I think just by doing it, just by being like that, it just, they, they really appreciated that. I, they would still call me Kantoku-san, but at least I would feel that they liked the fact that I would treat them exactly the same mm -hmm. as, you know, the main actor, as the assistant makeup, you know? Yes, because they're even more than the French. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. You probably have read Amélie Nothomb's uh, book about yes. what she... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Japan, yeah. So it's that the hierarchy mm -hmm. was, was even more, I think, absolutely. in Japanese. But I think it's funny because in France too, because we did shoot also like two weeks in France, and even there, they love how Belgians work, yeah. you know. So I think in more authoritarian places, when you come with your own way of doing, and when they see that it, we're actually doing good work, because yes. of, of course, if you, you're like, oh, let's all be friends, and then, you know, you're doing crap, it doesn't work. But if, if they can really see that there's a result and that we're doing, that we're finishing every day on time and that we have good, you know, yeah. then... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I fully agree, because mm -hmm. I, I think when we are talking about uh, professionalizing and, and uh, Linda, the, the, the keynote, uh, she yesterday told me um, we're almost, in, from, from her point of view, she, she said a few more good movies and a few more good prices and, and we are there internationally that was her her vision for for Belgium for Belgium oh. and but oh. I, it would be it would be a pity to 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 lose that ability so I, I, I really hope that we can keep our human way of, of, of working with groups and, and mm -hmm. so I, I think that can be something very uh, Belgian mm -hmm. and um, for me the most interesting thing was to to work abroad in an already established and professionalized market. Mm -hmm. Because like my first AD, he was already um, third, third generation. So his grandfather was a first assistant, his father. So and he carried a leather, a leather uh, thing from his grandfather to put his pencils in and all those things. So and um, he, after a while, because he was very, how would I say, not stubborn, very strict and uh, very British, I think, and, uh, and trying to organize everything, like huge scenes with lots of, of, of extras, like 300 people in a refugee camp with, with uh, explosions and all those things and helicopters, and he literally wanted to queue every single extra, and he had like 10 assistants who were also in costume and were also in, in, into the action. Then after a while I said, uh, Tom, I, I would love just to let it go and, and let, let's go with the, with the chaos. And I saw all the African, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And so, and I, I, I think in a way he, he also started to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and and his, his father never did and his, his grandfather never did. But, mm -hmm. So I think we can, we can influence them 
as well in a yeah. way. So I hope we don't lose our ability to... No, because I think I would even add up to it is that that's what makes us versatile and yes. adaptable. Yes. It's because we're not doing the American way with a lot of money yeah. where you come and you do things your way. You need a lot of money to be able to do that. Us with our more like humble yeah. industry... But that's why it's not, you're not going to lose it. Don't be afraid. No, 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 no. no. I'm not everything afraid at all. I'm not afraid of it all. But everything to do with money. When I came back to Belgium, I saw because the DMP or uh, a director or a uh, gaffer or whatever, they're all getting almost the same money. And that's also why people are on the same level. Mm -hmm. There is no hierarchy mm -hmm. between the payments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not going to change in Belgium. <laughs> 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 but as long as we are we are we're, you know as long as we're competent and doing good work I think that's obviously yeah. you can you do, you can do things your way if it makes sense yes um, yeah like for my if, if I could turn the clock turn back the clock and I could redo uh, like in Flanders fields a uh, World War one series I did here I, I would have asked the producer can we go can we go for a boot camp a proper boot camp with real military historians and military guys who, who, who can just make it real. Mm -hmm. So because I, I, I did a bootcamp, now this was a, a contemporary series nowadays and we had like two military uh, advisors on set and they were like so involved and they were like um, training the actors and I, I, I participated myself as well. Um, and it was it wasn't a, like a, a macho thing. It was really um, their aim was making the actors able to, to portray to, port to, to, to real, portray a real soldier. So they learned about skills, how to carry guns, all those things. But they also learned about uh, vulnerability and about when things go wrong and when yeah, what what psychological things like. Uh, post-stress disorder and all those things. So, and I don't think I'm, I'm, I'm not into money and production, but I think all, it was all set. Two weeks, I think it's, it's, it must be affordable, I think, for a production. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but <laughs> at least if, 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 if I could have had one week proper boot camp, it, it would have been better. Mm -hmm. They would have been able probably to sell it more in the international. Yes. Too. I don't think they get that money just for the fun of it. They no. know that whatever is bigger, or what, sure. but why is America so great? Because mm -hmm. they can indeed overblow everybody yeah. with, with yeah. incredible images yeah. that you cannot really do only with creativity. Yes, so really I agree. I agree. Yes, that's what I realized. We, we can do a lot with creativity, but that we need a little bit of help from the money people, and then a lot is possible. How did you approach with corrupt people? Do you afraid because of your small production? Mm -hmm. Aren't you afraid that the people that think of BBC yeah. would be good and protected yeah. when you're wearing a small crew, a small production, small budget? Well, not in Japan, but in Kazakhstan. <laughs> yeah, in Kazakhstan we had a few stories, especially to for the border, like the whole you know bringing equipment into a country like Kazakhstan. That was that was like a big, a, a, like it's been one of the most problematic thing for the production manager to solve. And at some point you had to use a guy who could help us, and you had to pay him because he was there at the border and said, okay, let it in. Because otherwise, if it's the border guy, either they take your equipment or they make you pay tons of money. So... But that's a, a big difference. Like we're not using, if something costs $100, you it costs $100. You don't need to negotiate. Oh, yeah. In yeah. 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 For that, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. No, it's mostly... $5. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's, it's, but that's mostly for, yeah, to bring equipment in and out. And you need to get the... Yes, well, we were really shooting in very remote places, yeah. and Kazakhstan is, is very cheap, so we didn't have that problem. And in Japan, too, we were shooting on an island. Tokyo would have been much more difficult. 
we did shoot two, two days in Tokyo and we had to do everything just guerrilla, guerrilla yeah. without any permission, just with the hidden camera and, you know, in the airport and in the train. We were, had, we were like totally, but all big, even Lost in Translation, Babel, all those films were shot totally illegally in Tokyo. Because to get a permission in, in Tokyo, it takes six months and it costs tons of money, so nobody does it. Um, so yeah, I mean, you, that's the kind of things you have to know about. You have to, and that's by going there a lot. The, when you do that kind of, of co-production with not much money, you have to prepare for many years, like two or three years, and you have to go there two, three times a year to really get used to the country, to get to know how it works, how people are, to make friends, to, you know, to show that you're really getting involved and that you're not just coming with your money and going back. That's when you have money. <laughs> when you that's don't, that's, that's a yeah. When you that's don't, we should yeah. I was on Malta shooting film while mm -hmm. Michael Bay was there shooting film. Mm -hmm. So it was like giant. And, and yeah. so, for example, if we needed an extra light or something, it was just it wasn't there. He just hired everything. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the only way we succeeded in making our film was because of friendship with with the people, with the, yeah. the, the extras, with the, with the the local crew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because. As soon as they discovered that we're not there with money mm -hmm. and we're not we're doing it to have fun, to, 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 to yeah. create something, mm -hmm. then things shifted. But yeah. before that moment, it was very difficult. Yeah. Everything we asked was impossible. Yeah. For example, Michael Bale, he, when he wanted to film in a, in a certain village, which he might film that day or might not, he just rented the whole village, he paid everybody 300 euros, every extra. They all dre were dressed up at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, ready to film. And then the guy decided, well, not today, maybe tomorrow. Just the people are paid without doing anything. We paid our extras 20 euros, 25 euros, they get lunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they had to work from 8 o'clock till 8 o'clock in the evening. So it was a very, very difficult way. But as soon as they discovered that everybody helped charging, uh, loading the, 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 the trucks and, 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 and having fun on set, it, mm -hmm. it totally changed. That's the only way I think we can... Uh, it's a very things. important yeah. point. You have, it's like a, almost the good thing we have to say here is that when you do a low budget co-production, you have to have, be integrated in the community and have to have an executive producer who really believes in the film with his heart. Yeah. You know, it can be a money thing, otherwise you're going to be ripped off for sure. So you have to find someone, like in our case, the Japanese guys, they, I mean, we worked together for three years, and they were really, and you know, so we, we didn't get the funding, so we had to postpone, and they were always there. They really wanted to make that film with us because they believed in it artistically. So you have to have that involvement. Um, we could have chosen another executive producer who was more business-minded. It, it wouldn't have worked this way. So I think that's really important to find the key persons to, to support the film on the, on, the, on the field and to go there, like on that island, they, they, I mean, we really got to know these people. They welcomed us, they would come and bring us like little onigiri rice bowls and, and the fishermen would bring us fresh fish at night. So we were really part of the community. And that's what makes it possible. Is it that way yeah. or the huge way? There's no difference. No, of course. I mean, if you have the money, don't bother, you know. Yeah, but sometimes that feels limiting, especially in the UK, that the that, that big thing, health and safety. Yeah. So on every single recce, there is a person, person shows up and uh, like a, an abandoned, an abandoned uh, location in Shetland, which was completely covered uh, under uh, bird shit. It was very beautiful and that was the reason why I showed that location. Health and safety can decide. You have to remove all the birches, and uh, the art guys have to recreate it. So it's an absurd situation sometimes. So yeah. And is it still possible to improvise and move from such parts since the days ago? Was made to do that? Yeah. Uh, for, yeah. 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 That was also new for me. I was like by the execs, by the producers, stimulated to to do my thing and um, because I, I, I cast it after, after a, a few weeks they told me you, you did your casting in a very weird way but we like it so I, I cast it uh, comic, comical actors in very serious dramatical um, um, roles and, and they, they really liked the idea and they, after a while they told me go on we, 
you should know that he's also comic collector. He has a very, very good time, and so feel free to, to experiment. And, and to, so there was room. Ah, that's a no. That's a bit. That's a, the health and safety thing. We have no <laughs> allowance to shoot there, sir. And they can say it in a very, very kind way. <laughs> Yes, yes. On the, on the level of, 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 of scenes, on the level of working with the actors, everything was possible. Like, if there, that there's another thing I would like to imply here when I work here, and that's what they call director's time. And that's the proper, proper rehearsal time where everybody leaves the hmm. set and where I just have my first AD and my DOP close to me. And then you becomes very silent and, and they just respect and if, if, if you need like one hour and a half then you need one hour and a half and everybody will have some coffee and some tea and um, so but because of our of my training here we could do it in, in half an hour but it was really uh, yeah, an important moment for me how nice it is to work with your actors on the set, yeah. just be play and see, yeah. just by playing. Yeah. That's a kind of beauty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's, it's a shame if, if, the, if the electricians and the sparks are working during that process, and that's often the case in, in, in Belgium. And, and they have to, because we, we have to. Well, it's a matter of organization too. If you really, if that's something yeah. you can talk about with your first AD, that you need that time, first thing in the morning, everybody out, just the actors, yeah. the DP, the first AD, and you, you rehearse the scene. Just, you know, you take that half hour or that hour mm. because you know that the rest of the day is going to go faster. Yes, that's and, true. Um, that's something I imposed in Japan because I had the excuse that because it was Japanese actors, I didn't know how it was going to work. At the end of the day, it went great, but we still had our time yeah. every morning. So, but it's something you can, even in Belgium, I think if it's something you agree with, with your first AD, that that's how you're going to do, and then you're going to spend one hour just with your actors and then seven hours shooting, mm -hmm. I'm sure the seven hours are probably going to go more efficiently yeah. because everybody knows what they're doing. That's, that's also what, you know, to answer the other question of how do you make things clear on the film you're making? Well, by that kind of methods, everybody knows what we're doing for the rest of the day because they've seen it in the morning. Yes, and then, yeah, after the, that half an hour, an hour uh, director's time, you have crew rehearsal. And then mm -hmm. every, every uh, head of department... Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this uh, something that might seem uh, British actors or Japanese actors? This extra reversal time. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. The, the question is: um, Are they uh, British actors? In my case, are are they used to that? Yes. Yes, they are. But if if I would have said we are going to do it completely the other way, they would have ex accepted it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same in Japan. They they're not used to that, but they loved it. Of course. Give time to actors. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, very good question. Well, what I said, you know, before, the Japanese actors, they're, they really do, I mean, it's like, it, it's a mix between, it would be the actor studio for samurais, you know, like they really have this thing where they're there, they're prepared, they know their text, they, they have worked on their thing, and they would just do and something, even if you don't tell them, you know, and then you redirect, but there's something really precise about how they work. Which is great. And then they love when you bring input. Of course, they want to know that, of course, they're not just doing things on their own. So they're really into this yeah. interaction. Um, with, I think with Belgian and French actors, it's more going to be like, you know, more psychological, more talks, more preparing together about the character, feeding more intellectually. Uh -huh. When the Japanese, it's going to be like, it's there, you know. Similar, yeah. Yeah, similar experience. Very, very, very well prepared when they come on set. The British? Yes. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah.
Syrian. And, and oh, uh, yeah, in my case, because it's also about casting, of course, but ego, egoless, mm -hmm. no egos. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also a, a real, real pleasure. Yeah. On yeah. 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 Of course. Yeah. During casting, pro yes, I had like a choice for for one character, like 20, 20 proposals. They all, they all thought at least. Yeah. yeah. But I think also it's important maybe to talk about the casting process when you shoot in a place like Japan or Kazakhstan even more. The way you cast. Because if you if you work with like a Belgian actor or a French actor, you've seen them in many yeah. films. You know what they yeah. can do. You're not you know you're going to do like acting work with them. Mm -hmm. When you go to a place like Japan or Kazakhstan, you really have to find the person for that specific role because you have no idea. Usually, you've never seen anything they were in. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, for, in Kazakhstan, I worked with Kazakh actors and Russian actors, and it was really a process of sometimes working with people who had m mostly no experience. But who the thing I needed them to do, they were that character. So they didn't need to do any acting. Yeah. And I think that's very a very important point yeah. too, especially in remote places. Uh, and, and you work with a, with a casting director. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. That's, that's an important, very, very, very important. Very important. Yes. Yeah. Very for me. That's also, um, and it's also happening here in Belgium. We have a few uh, casting directors. Very important um, relationship. Yes. I think. Mm -hmm. And. For me, that's most, one of the most vulnerable stages for me as a director, because then I'm in a doubt, and, and, and if you can phone her in the evening, or him, and ask, what do you think? And then sometimes they can, they can really, uh, literally analyze more. If you go for him or her, be aware that in combination with your movie will go a little bit more that way. And if you go for, so they, they, they literally help you to, to, to to offer you the options and to explain mm -hmm. possible options and, and mm -hmm. I like it that way of um, mm -hmm. I'm always getting inspired by experiencing those kind of uh, you've got the end decision. Sorry? With the casting, you are the casting director, yes. you are the director yes. of the end Yes. So how it works, so you meet your casting director with a producer and some ex executives. In some cases, your main character, in this case, Michelle Keegan, was already chosen by the broadcaster. But then, um, I as a director try to explain what kind, how I, how I see the, uh, the character. And then she proposes a lot of um, possibilities. And I, I agree on what you say, because I know a lot of them. It's, you, you have a very, very free and un, you're not uh, prejudiced, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. so very open, and uh, yeah, also the, the, the first meeting with an actor, that's also for me a very, very important moment, and they, they, they sense and they feel when you're not impressed by what they did before, or you just consider them as another human being and as an actor, as a professional, as an actor, mm -hmm. so that's... Yeah. Are they never party and judge in England? Is it really a casting director? They are never party and judge at uh, the same time? No. I mean, a casting director is really a casting director. Yeah. It's not a little bit of an agent. No. Also, no, 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 no. If that's in France, it's surely they really, they, they just lose the license. Oh, yeah. They would make votes. Okay. But in, in this country, it's a little difficult. Yes. But, yeah. But I, I, I would suggest uh, directors. Sure that that when she's that yeah. She has the whole range oh yes, yeah, it's beautiful to see. And then in, in, in South Africa to work with local um, casting directors, again there they were like just waiting for me, and and was yeah they're so used to work with Americans mm -hmm. who want options mm -hmm. and who want yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. huge difference. But uh, like you also have like I, I, I had one boy, an eight-year-old boy, um, who came on his own. He walked two hours to be there on, on, on the casting. So you you you, and it, it was important uh, that that character was very young and independent, uh, a bit a uh, bit of um, yeah, a kind of personality. 
So just by showing up that way, he already. And um, the casting director afterwards uh, uh, told me that that was one of his tricks, <laughs> just to come <laughs> <laughs> on his own without his parents, and then it was yeah, a way to <laughs> show your yeah, engagement. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So but we're almost at the end, but I'll just. But I, but I think it's also good. is when you're working abroad, that you should not forget that people want to know you. The actors, the crew members, they, they, who are you and what kind of language do you use and are you... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you always spend some time with that before mm -hmm. talking about who, because it's said to talk about who and directly. Mm -hmm. They yeah. do want to talk about that. I, I had the feeling that the first one is who are you yes. or what is yeah, your yeah. That's important. background, yeah. how do you talk, how do, yeah. you, yes. do you touch people, yeah, 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 don't of course. Yeah. are you... Yeah. Yeah. That, therefore, I think it's also, in my case, it was important uh, when I brought my DOP. Also, when I had conversations with my DOP, I always did it in, in English, yeah. so that everybody on set was able to understand. And, and so we had no secret language to, to communicate. Um, do you have the feeling that it's for both? Do you have the feeling that working abroad uh, also increases the interest of foreign markets in the Flemish market, Flemish television series and film? Or is that, yeah, I don't know. Because there's a lot of discussion going on in, in small countries about the brain drain of, of talents working uh, abroad and should governments continue to uh, stimulate uh, talent locally that then leave? But I have the impression that it's also the other way around because you have this like I, I hope so, I hope so, but I think uh, co-productions like The White Queen and, and they, I think, were not the best examples for creative co-production. That was like just tax shelter um, getting the money, I think. So you, you are suggesting another way of, of um, yeah. No, I was uh, just thinking that, for example, but you work in the area, does that help in selling? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Flemish content, to content. Yeah, okay. Content yes, well. yes, yes. It is because um, they they watch my show reel, and then when they when they watch uh, Quiz Me Quick, they recognize it because they also have that pub quiz culture. So there is a possibility to do a possibility to do a remake. So that that's one of, of uh, maybe an example. Of, of uh, exchange. Mm -hmm. Well, once there's an exchange, there's always going to be, you know, a, a movement, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, in my case, I felt it was more like they were happy to have an experience that also puts them, you know, in, in a, in a co-production. And like the Japanese were really happy that they were actually participating in, in a film that would probably travel to France and to Europe and to Canada. and, yeah. and so, yeah. Yeah, yeah because, and after a while, crew members literally said, oh, it's such a pity that we don't speak languages. We only speak English. Ah, oh, if, if, I, if I spoke Flemish, could, could I be your assistant then over there? So, it's, it is true. It's, it's, uh, they, they would love, I think. And then, yeah. But, something. Was it uh, Yeah, that's that there. I'm, I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm blessed with um, uh, this this country. Uh, don't know the proper word. So I I forget about numbers and I'm so it's one extra zero or three extra zeros doesn't matter. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes I, I mean, um, I I have a tendency when I got like uh, six army trucks. I, I want to use them all six, and in reverse shot, I, I want to reuse them without uh, the canvas thing on it, top on it, you know, to make like to make twelve drugs already, mm -hmm. and that's in, in our nature, in our Flemish nature, and and, and often they think like uh, we have six drugs and you just pick what you need. 
So, you know what I mean? So, that's, um, yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. To optimize, to op optimize the, the, yeah. Yes, exactly. That's, uh, that, I think that became a second nature. Due to, uh, yeah, all the, the, the limited uh, possibilities and abilities. So, I have a question for Anna. Um, you did a lot of rehearsals before the shoot, like with the French actors already in Japan. Well, the thing when you, that's one of the thing about, of course, co-productions is that you never have all your actors together at one same place. So, what I did do, the actress, the main actress, I, for two years before we started shooting, I went to see her in Paris maybe once every two months, so we had a lot of, you know, discussions, and sometimes rehearsing, it's not always rehearsing, it's not even always talking about the script or about the character, it's just getting to know each other and, and creating a trust, you know, just talking about, like for two years we almost didn't speak about the film, we just became friends, basically, uh -huh. and that's a very helpful thing to once you're going to go on board together. Uh, then we did do a few rehearsals with the the Belgian actor, so I brought him to Paris and we had, so at least we could just even a few hours just to create some tools and to see what kind of Chemistry. style of directing it's going to be, and I think that's enough. And same thing in, in Japan, uh, during the auditions I would already show a little bit on what kind of directing it would be. Um, so I think there's not one way of rehearsing. It's not, you know, for some directors they need to have lots of time before for one month to rehearse the scenes. I don't really need that. I just need to create a connection with every one of my actors and just to have a few, just even one hour to just show them, okay, it's going to be this kind of, of relationship we're going to have. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Together, well, that's the thing, is that that we never had the chance to do until the first day of, uh, of the shoot. So that's why we had this time, we had organized to have one hour every morning to rehearse. And in the beginning of the shoot it was very useful, but by the time we went, we needed it less and less because just they knew each other and it wasn't as... But you have that for like every new character coming in and every new scene. The first rehearsal, you never quite know whether the scene is going to spark or not. And so it's finding the spark. And once you found it, you just let it go. So, yeah. so we're almost at the end of this panel. And uh, maybe as a quick closing up, what are your new adventures uh, that you're heading into? Um, I'm preparing uh, my first movie. And um, uh, it's... Uh, it's uh, Based on a novel, uh, Vele Hemels, mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's it's, a, it's an interesting way uh, in, in evolution, an interesting evolution in my authorship. So, and what I like about it is um, being able to to feel like a, it, will, it will feel like a debut um, to do it for the first time again. Because sometimes when I watch. Of my early work in television, I, I often, um, yeah, I often think like, wow, how how could I do that? Uh, after, after a while, I think you, yeah, the more you know, the more you get limited as well. Uh, so I hope to find like a new, yeah, to become a bit like newborn uh, director, making that movie. And I'm actually in discussion with the, the Japanese producers who would like to do another film together. So we're like sort of, you know, looking for maybe Japanese novels. And then I'm hoping one day to make a film in Belgium. <laughs> that would really push me out of my comfort zone. But, you know, I think I have to do it one day. To sleep in your own bed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> to see what it's like to work in <laughs> Flanders with Flemish actors. <laughs> well, I thank you very much for uh, being here and uh, you as an audience for the lot of questions that you uh, proposed. So uh, we can all have lunch now uh, upstairs at the fourth floor again. So. Thank you. Thank you.